we're calculating a score, again, on a scale of 0 to 100, higher being better, of the green impact of my custom software applications. If I click on that, again, I'll start at the portfolio level at the control tower, looking across my software, identifying some recommended actions on, for example, where do I have some quick wins where I can improve my green impact quickly with less effort than where are some other opportunities that I might want to look. Let's drill down to one application and see what we're talking about when we're talking about greener software. So I'm going to pick one application. I'm going to come down to it. And this application has a green impact score of 84.3. That's a combination of some survey questions we ask, but primarily what's more interesting is what we're looking at inside the code. These are patterns that we call green deficiencies. These are patterns in the code and the engineering of an application that cause the application to use excess resources more than are necessary when there's an alternative. So a very simple example here would be uh, a really simple example, avoid nested loops. That sounds like a very oversimplistic example, but there are alternatives to doing that in modern software development. And what we're seeing here is that we found 349 occurrences. Here's the effort to remove that. And again, we will provide that uh, knowledge base on how to address and remove that green deficiency because there are other options for implementing that type of functionality in a software application that's going to make my application greener, meaning it's going to produce or generate less carbon emissions. Now, here's the interesting thing about greener software. Not only is it better for the environment, it also typically translates into less expensive software because you're consuming less energy, and more resilient software, and better performing software. So there's some additional business benefits to making your software greener as well.